I should be able to get those up uh, this weekend. Just make sure we're still rolling here. Check one, two. Yeah, seems okay. All right. And so um, if you just take a quick look at Canvas, um, we do have the Chapter 2 materials sitting up here now. Um, like I said, I'll put the lectures up for Chapter 1. But you have the Chapter 2 material, uh, Chapter 2 slides, Chapter 2 quizzes. And we're going to walk through an example that's going to pull together some of the things that we're going to see on the slides. A uh, very basic example of the accounting process, just to make sure, again, that uh, we're all in pretty good shape. I'm going to go fairly quickly through that. Uh, based on how that little magnet exercise we had the other day went, where you guys seemed to crush that. So most of this should be pretty easy. If you find that any of this stuff in this chapter, in this example, causes you any pain at all, you need to address that immediately. I mean, we're still in the review of the basic stage right here. And if there's anything that you're sitting there saying, I didn't know that, I didn't know that assets were increased with a debit, um, you've got some work to do to, you know, get that resolved as soon as possible. Okay. The other thing that I wanted to point out is uh, on Canvas is if you go into the announcements, um, I did provide the link to uh, the FASB codification, and uh, we'll be practicing this some more in another section. Session. What do I got to click on here to open it? Okay. Uh, we'll be focusing on this in another uh, class session because um, I still have two things I want to resolve with it. One, how do you do the search within the section to find a paragraph that might be specific if you know how to navigate your way around the codification and you find yourself in a section and you're like, I just want to search in this section because I know the answer is going to be here somewhere. I still have to figure that out. I'm, I haven't found any uh, guidance yet that tells us exactly how to do that part. I know that you can do that. It's just that they've changed the codification from the last time I did that. I'm not exactly sure how to do it now under the current configuration. And then we had the question, the person's not here, I don't think, that asked how would I um, make this available to somebody if they wanted to look it up. And I said you could mail it to them. And so I still have to figure that out. Uh, so I'm going to wait until I resolve those two questions before I uh, go back in and work with you on the codification. But it is there. You just click there, and you put that username and password in. And you can go in there at your leisure. You know, you're sitting around on a Saturday night. You're trying to, you know, make your Saturday night more, you know, more exciting. Go into the codification, mess around, do some searches in there. You might find that pretty interesting. Okay. Any question on that? Okay, good. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, drop that down and get into our slides for Chapter 2. Okay, so uh, when you take a look at the slides for Chapter 2, um, and we're going to be talking about a review of the accounting process. Okay, now uh, some very basic terminology. An event is a business event that typically carries with it a transaction that we will want to record in the financial report. So often these transactions come to the accountant and say, hey, we need to be have this record in the financial statements. Now sometimes there'll be an event or transaction in which the company won't necessarily know the best treatment, the best accounting treatment. And it may be our job to get into the codification and figure out, okay, what would be the appropriate um, account and journal entries that would be affected by this particular uh, event. And that's why we have the codification um, in transaction. That's why we have the codification to help us with that process. Okay. Now, when we look at accounts, we have our different accounts, assets, liabilities, et cetera, the elements that we studied a couple of classes to ago. But then when we start talking about our records, we have permanent accounts and temporary accounts. Permanent accounts are accounts on the balance sheet. They do not close at the end of the year. Okay, so is cash a permanent account? Let's hope so. Is uh, revenue a permanent account? Revenue is not. Revenue is a temporary account that appears on the income statement, right? Income statement accounts tend to be or are temporary accounts. Also, you would have your dividend account, 
which is neither on the balance sheet nor the income statements on the what, statement of retained earnings and our dividend account is temporary because we close it at the end of the year we turn it back to zero so any account that gets turned back to zero at the end of the year is considered temporary meaning it's only going to last for this year or at least the numbers that are in there this year and then we'll turn it back to zero so i've mentioned two temporary accounts revenues dividend any others huh good expenses any other Income summary, we kind of sometimes call, you'll see some literature that will call that a temporary account because we close it out at the end of the year, right? Okay. Okay, good. Then we have our ledger, and our ledger accounts basically keep track, our ledger, I should say, basically keeps track of the balance in all of our accounts throughout the year. The ledger is important because ultimately we do what? Well, we're going to pull our financial reports from whatever the balances are in the ledger. At least we're going to have an accounting software that will do that. Okay. Posting is the process of what? We take journal entries and we post them to the ledger. And we're going to practice with that, review with that a little bit here today. They have this uh, terminology here, trial balance. Okay. Now, trial balance back in the day was, you know, something that was very, very important to the accounting process because as we're making journal entries during the year, if we made a mistake and double debited something or double credited or forgot to put the credit, the trial balance wouldn't balance and that would indicate to us that we made a mistake, wouldn't it? Hey, the debits don't equal the credits, what's wrong? And we'd hunt for that mistake before we started making any adjustments to the trial balance because garbage in, garbage out. If there's a problem with the trial balance, then whatever comes after the adjustments is also going to be garbage. These days, the trial balance is not as important for that purpose because we have general ledger software. And I'm going to show you general ledger software using McGraw-Hill Connect for not our book, because our book doesn't have the general ledger software with it for some stupid reason. But um, in fact, I ran into the McGraw-Hill representative in the elevator on the way over here. And he says, yo, yeah, I'll come by your office. And I can see by his eyes that you know, I'm not going to this guy's office because every time I go there, he's got something to say about something with our product. So if he does come, though, I'll let him know that they should have a general ledger software with this text as well. So I'm going to sort of show it to you anyway so you get a sense that with general ledger software, they don't allow you to put a journal entry in if the debits don't equal the credits. The computer will go, -da -da -da, which means you made a mistake. Your debits don't equal your credits. You need to fix that. I'm not going to accept this journal entry until you do. Okay, that's what the computer is saying. So there is no way to have a unbalanced trial balance. Okay, now that does not mean that it doesn't serve some purpose these days, and that often management will say to the accounting department, I know you're not done with the financial statements, but I'd like to see the trial balance. And that's just giving them a sense as to where we stand with our account balances prior to adjustments. Adjusting entries are made typically at year end to make any last end of the uh, year, I should say, I don't know if it's last minute, but end of the year accruals. Okay, if we have some unearned revenue that we need to show as earned, we'll do that in our adjusting entries. And then we pull our financial statements from the adjusted trial balance. Okay. All right, good. And then we would make our closing entries. Closing entries are where we close all our revenue, all our expense accounts to zero. We take that difference to income summary. We close out income summary to retain earnings. And then we would close any dividends out to retain earnings. And it's really not until you complete that closing that our ledger accounts on our balance sheet actually balance, right? The balance sheet is really out of balance until you make your year end closing entries okay all right i think you know that assets equal liabilities plus stockholders equity i think you've known that for some time now or somewhere around the line here in the last year or so we've beat that one into you okay and then what you take assets minus liabilities that would then equal equity just algebraically speaking okay debits and credits debit on the left credit on the right T accounts. I put this slide in here. If you took the introductory class with me, you know this slide. Guys, if there is 
any weak tissue in your brain around how you increase an asset, decrease it with debits and credits, you need to get on that now. I mean, like, skip your next class and go and look at this, okay? You need to get on this now if there's any weakness at all. Now, I'm not, any of you uh, planning to be tax folks? Okay, let me say something to my tax guys, okay? Uh, my CPA exam students who have already started to focus on tax, they are notoriously bad with journal entries. I talk to them about journal entries and they go, okay, and this is a weakness that follows you around like a piece of toilet paper on your shoe after walking out of the bathroom, okay? You cannot get rid of it. It won't leave, okay? So you're going to have to sit there and make sure that you – work on that weak muscle if you have it, okay? If not, this thing is like, hey, who cares, John? I don't need to worry about that, okay? Nothing happens in accounting without journal entries. Those E's are the E in revenue and the E in expense. I just noticed that wrapped weird, okay? So there's no special E, you know. What does E mean, okay? Okay, good. Chart of accounts. Uh, you guys proved to me that you know this already because we messed around with those magnets the other day. Okay, and the red means nothing here. If you see a red uh, font there, whatever I stole this, I mean borrowed this from, happened to put red on there. And uh, so don't worry about that. But you need to know your different accounts, whether they're assets, liabilities, revenues, expenses, stockholders, equity. Okay, and you see this one again, another way of looking at it, how it all fits together. Okay, now remember that, uh, well, we're probably beyond that part. I was going to say, I got to get my pen. I was going to say, well, you'll get into it more into the next class, but this slide is a little bit uh, missing something. When we talk about our stockholders' equity, we know it's common stock, comprised of com st common stock, retain earnings. Is there something missing here that could potentially be part of my stockholders' equity? What if I issue the stock for more than par? Journal entry, issue stock for more than par. Stock's par value equals $10 a share. But the market price of the stock I'm just making this up, equals, I don't know, $100 a share. And I issue $10 shares for cash. Who wants to give me that journal entry? Now, if you don't know, you need to go like this and say, please, Alex, speak to me. Speak to me, Alex. Well, go for the low-hanging fruit, guys. Okay, let me just go ahead. Uh, debit, $1,000 cash. Good. Now, let me say something. Uh, is it 1000 Yeah. Let me say something about debiting that cash for $1,000, okay? Um, there used to be this song I liked. The lyrics were, free your, free your mind, your ass will follow. Okay? Was the song. Okay? Ass. You can say that right in public nowadays. Which means what? Hey, let something go and you'll be surprised how it's going to carry you forward. So if you can figure out the cash, put that down. What I love about accounting is everything comes down to debits and credits. You can usually figure out one or the other. Often the debit. Do you like debits better or credits? Everybody likes debits better. That's why the credit union, the credits form credit unions. I messed up my joke. The credits form credit unions, okay, because they heard that people didn't like them, okay? All right, so usually the debit, for whatever reason, maybe it's because the first thing you write, 
is comes first, but you can you you can write the credit first too. The counting thunder won't come down and destroy you if you put the credit first. If that's something that you're easier to figure out, then what I like about accounting, you can usually figure out one, the debit or the credit, and there's got to be the other one, and it's going to be for the same amount. They're going to equal up, aren't they, at the end? Okay. So what do we want to do on the credits here? Huh? You want to credit common stock for what? 10 times 10 for 100? Okay, good. Anything else? I know I need 900 more credits. See how beautiful this is? See what a science? See why in the 12th century, the accountants were all over there going, Hey, man, we're just chilling here and making everything balance. Other people are worried. If we sail too far, will we fall off the edge? And the accountants would sit there and say, well, if you do, we'll just write it off as a loss. Don't worry about it. Go ahead. 12th century. Galileo's in jail because he wants to look at stars. The accountants are just sitting there going, okay, how long was he in there? Five years. That means he depreciated how long of his life? Huh? We're not selling, we're buying. Or are we, I'm sorry, my bad. We are, we're selling the stock. We are selling the stock. But no, it's not an asset that we're selling. Sorry, you were right that we're selling the stock, but it's not a, it's not a asset that we're selling. We're, sell, we're issuing stock, aren't we? Well, you probably can't remember because it's in an incredibly long account name, but it's also the most descriptive account name in the history of accounting. Additional paid in capital in excess of par. Isn't that what it is? The additional paid in capital in excess of par? Which we like to abbreviate what? APIC? APIC? Additional paid in capital in excess of par, $900. Is that the correct journal entry? Is that the correct journal entry? Okay, can I prepare a balance sheet after this? Can I do a balance sheet? Okay, you guys were the champions of the accounts and where they appear. Cash is how much? Thousand, good. Do I have any liabilities? That's my asset. Do I have any liabilities? Liabilities are zero. Okay, stock is not a... Uh, Liability, and then in my stockholders' equity, I've got common stock of what, $100? And I have a pick of 900 You don't know what a pleasure is to speak to you. You know how much time I spend teaching introductory accounting? There is no way in the world we would have gotten there that fast okay okay so we have what we have the balance sheet we have the cash in our stockholders equity we have um, common stock and additional paid in capital in excess of par right so um, do we have another stockholders equity account here that isn't showing what is it the A pick is not showing, right? They didn't put that on this slide? It could be another stockholder's equity account. We know that retained earnings is part of stockholder's equity. We know the common stock is obviously, right? Okay. Okay, good. Now, when we deal with our retained earnings, our retained earnings goes with the, and remember we had the little slides up here for our retained earnings. Remember, not our little slides, but our little magnets. We had the beginning balance, let's say zero. Let's say it's our first year of operations. We do what? What do we add? Don't make me bust out the magnets again. What do we add? We add the net income, whatever that is, just making a number up, $100 less what? less the dividends. Good. For And again, I'm just making numbers up. So the ending balance would be, what, 70 here in this little example? Okay. Okay, good. And that's the basically what I'm showing you there is like our statement of retained earnings. Question? Okay, good. So when we record entries, we record them into our journal. 
So if we issued common stock for, say, cash, and of course we ignored the paid in capital and the comma here, we would debit the what, cash and credit the common stock. In other words, we have issued this stock at par because there no, is no additional paid in capital in excess of par. Debit on the left, credit on the right. Again, if you have any problem with journal entries, guys, you need to get on that. You need to come to my office like a patient who cut their arm. Oh, 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 save me. Okay, you need to figure something out to get that fixed. Okay, okay, good. Come over, and um, when we make our journal entries, we'll have the accounts and the amounts. We'll debit, credit, a date. You should usually put an explanation in for a journal entry. I mean, you record something in January. I'm the worst person at this. You know, I write something down somewhere, and I'm like, I'll remember what that is. And then I'm telling you, two hours later, I'm looking at it saying, what was I trying to write here again? So make sure when you're doing journal entries, and I won't hold it against you in terms of points in this class because I'm just not that kind of a grader. But I've been, I, my accounting class, they'd mark you wrong if you didn't put the explanation. So you should get in the habit of making sure you know what was the purpose of a journal entry and noting that down. So a year later, you know, towards the end of the year or whatever, you look at that and uh, you know what that was all about. Okay. Okay, good. Posting, we post to the ledger. Okay, from the journal to the ledger. The general ledger software really does this for us to a large extent. Okay, so our standard account form, I'm just going to show you a picture of it more than the words, has our what? Has our date, the date that we posted the transaction, whether it was a debit or a credit to that transaction. And since two accounts were affected by that journal entry we saw earlier on the earlier slide, we put the debit to cash, we put the credit to common stock, and our balance sheet balances, doesn't it, in our ledger cards? Okay. Now, um, I could now pull a financial report from this by showing my balance sheet, and I'm not going to write it, cash would have 15, common stock would have 15, right? Okay, so we pull our financial reports from our ledgers, okay? Now, again, software pretty much does this for us in an accounting information system. So we really would not have to sit here and do the mechanical process that we are going to practice with right now. Okay, so I'm going to go through this. I'm expecting that this is going to be very much like the little magnet exercise where you guys just crush it, but we're going to go through this together. Okay, I'm going to put it up on the screen. I do have this also up on Canvas under Chapter 2. If you took my uh, introductory class, you should be familiar with this example. And uh, in the introductory class, it's like, Everybody thinks I'm handing them out, you know, the uh, original scriptures to translate or something. And uh, in this class, it's going to be like a no-brainer for us. Okay, so make sure you get a copy of that. There is also a copy on Canvas. I guess I can discard this. So if I show you Canvas right now and you go to – okay. Thank you, sir. Here, gentlemen. Thank you. Okay. And uh, – you go over here, you'll see the same thing that you have on the screen and uh, on the page in front of you right now that you see on the screen. Should be the same thing. Everybody got this? Okay. Well, there you see where it is. Um, I'll have to open it. Well, there it is. I don't know why it's giving me a hard time. Okay, year one is what we're going to go through. We may even be able to get a chance to go through year two. 
because I'm thinking we should go through this pretty fast. And I'll give you the year two handout. I just hand them out separately because then everybody gets two of year twos, two of year ones, but nobody has one of year one and one, nobody has year one of year two. So did you sign in, everybody? Okay, make sure you sign in. Like I said, I'm seeing a lot of blank spaces, and uh, these are people that are going to start wondering why they're not getting homework points. So make sure you sign in. Okay, all right, now you come over. Year one, year two. I didn't hand year two to you yet. I'm going to hand year two to you. I'm just showing you uh, where you would find the tab for year two if you wanted to pull this down off of Canvas. For people that didn't come to class that might want to know where this is right now. Okay. Um, so they can see it. Okay. Now you come over. And um, the other thing I want to show you on Canvas real quick. Okay. Is you could... Also, um, come over and under Chapter 2, do you see this clean version? Well, that doesn't mean it's like the other one's not X-rated or anything. By clean version, I mean that there's no, I don't even have to, well, I'll open it now. Um, there's no numbers in it, no journal entries. So with that version, okay, you could sort of do the whole exercise yourself as well if you need it, if you need it extra, extra practice. I am of the opinion that you guys are going to eat this like a chocolate bar, okay? It shouldn't be a problem. Okay, all right, but let me go ahead and uh, get out of this one. We're in that one. And uh, let's go to year one, which is what you have in front of you, okay? And we issue common stock for a million dollars cash. Now what we really have on this side is the journal. So we put our debit and credit in the journal, issue common stock for cash, debit on the left, credit on the right. We debit the cash for a million, Credit the common stock for a million. Now, in this case, I'm assuming we're issuing the common stock for par, right? Because if we issued it for more than the par, we'd need the additional paid in capital, right? But we go ahead then and we post to the ledger. Now, when we post to the ledger, we do the very mechanical process, which God has now created computers for us to do. But just looking at it from a manual standpoint, we would post the debit to cash for a million dollars. And then those ledger cards, like we saw on the slide there before we came to this example, shows the balance of a million dollars, right? We credit the common stock for a million in the journal. And then at some point, computers these days do them automatically. If we were doing this in a manual process, maybe daily or so, we'd have to go and post those to the ledger. So we make a journal entry in our, an entry in our journal, and then we do what, everybody? Post to the ledger, right? Okay. Okay, good. So we go ahead and we do that. Now, let's say that we decide we want to buy a building. And let's say when we buy the building, the dude wants $1.2 for it. We only have a million dollars cash. We agree that we'll give him a million dollar down payment, and then we'll pay the remaining 200000 on account, whatever, right? So that means that we're going to obviously debit building for 1.2, credit cash for a million. And when we make that credit to cash for a million, of course, our cash balance goes down to zero now because we have... Uh, used up that cash and then we post the liability to what to the mortgage payable whatever you call it doesn't matter the account name at this point now we have a balance of 200,000 that liability right okay then we go over to the next transaction and we purchase a vehicle on credit beautiful thing about America is you can buy things without any money right Trump thinks he made America great again. No, it was this concept. Don't worry about money. Just take the stuff you want and then work your butt off to pay for it, right? Okay. So what happens? You go ahead and you debit the equipment. You credit this payment, vehicle payment, payable, whatever. You debit equipment. Now there's a balance in the equipment account, 115000 
we credit the pay up bill and I say that like that for my introductory students so that they remember that pay up bills are liabilities right and we go ahead and we have that credit to the payable then what then we go ahead and we provide some service and it's worth two hundred thousand it's a cash payment I probably could have said cash there but they give us cash for that work so what do we do we debit cash for two hundred thousand and when we do our cash balance comes back up to 200000 I like that. And then we go ahead and we do what? Credit the revenue account. And now we've got $200,000 worth of revenue, don't we? Okay. Okay, good. Then you carry on to the next transaction. And I don't know, maybe we were doing uh, concerts or something and we had to have our equipment moved and we had these big old lumpers that were moving our uh, equipment, some big old guys from Lyft. We're lifting our equipment, and they're kind of mean-looking, and they say, hey, just pay us cash right now. We say, okay. So we reach into our pocket of our $200,000 and pay them the cash for their assistance for moving our stuff. And so what do we do? Of course, we credit cash. I'm going to look at that credit first since it's right here. So now my cash is $130,000, is not it? And I'm going to go ahead and debit expenses for $70,000 because I have now incurred an expense. Now I'm putting all my expenses into one big account called expense because I wanted this whole thing to fit on one page, right? We could have expenses for utilities, expenses for delivery services, whatever, right? Okay, but I'm just gonna do this one uh, expense for, uh, for brevity purposes, okay? All right, good, now you come over and we decide to pay a dividend. When we pay a dividend, it's a cash dividend, we credit cash, obviously, and we debit the account called dividend, don't we? And so now we know we paid $13,000 worth of dividends this year. Okay. All right. So with all that now, we're done with the hard part. The easy part is just to pull the financial statements. And we pull them from our ledger accounts here, don't we? Okay, so do, let's do the income statement first. First you make the income statement, then we'll do the statement of retained earnings, then we'll do the balance sheet. Okay, but let's do the income statement first. That says income statement. And did we have revenues for the period? Revenue is 200000 Good. Do we have any expenses? Good. Expenses are seventy. Good. Anything else? Anything else? Now we just have to calculate our net income, don't we? Net income is how much? 130000 isn't it? Okay, good. There's our income statement. See how easy this is? See how easy accounting is? Look at that. It's just a matter of do you know when you see what a transaction tells you what debit, what credit you have to make? If you can't figure out the debit, figure out the credit first. If you figure out the debit first, the credit will follow. Then you just simply do this mechanical process. The only thing that was ever hard about accounting for me was I could never get the numbers from the journal to the ledger without messing it up. God heard me and said, we're going to create general ledger software so John never has to worry about that again. The general ledger software does it itself, doesn't it? Okay, so you got those ledgers, and then you just pull the amounts out of the ledgers into the financial statements. Has there ever been a more beautiful science than this? Brings tears to my eyes, okay? All right, so you come over, and you look at the statement of retained earnings. Statement of RE. What's RE? Retain earnings, good. And we have a beginning balance. And guys, I'm assuming the beginning balance here is zero because we just started our business, didn't we? Okay. Then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put in my net income, which I'll abbreviate NI, which we know is right here, 130000 Right? Then that's an add. Then I'm going to subtract what? Good. Subtract the dividends. And when I look at the dividend account, it's showing me how much? 13000 Good. So I am now 
showing an ending balance besides being out of room for no apparent reason. There it is. I'm now showing an ending balance. of 117,000. That's the ending balance for retained earnings. That's at 1231, isn't it? 1231 is the ending balance, 117,000. Beginning balance, zero, plus the net income, 130, minus the dividend of 13 equals 113,000 ending balance. Okay, okay, good. Now I can go ahead and I'm gonna put my balance sheet over here. And when I prepare the balance sheet, I have cash, and I have cash of how much? Easy part, guys. Just pick up the balances off of the off of the ledger cards, right? Cash is 117,000. That's my assets. Let me squeeze in assets up here. Yeah. Assets, cash. Is that your favorite asset? Yes, it is. You can turn cash into any future economic benefit you like within the confines of the law, right? Okay. Any other assets? Huh? The equipment? Okay, good. Good. Equipment. Equipment is 150000 Anything else? Good. Building. And the building is 1,200,000. So I add those up and my total assets, do I have a number? 1,200,000. is the total assets. Right? Okay. Okay, good. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do my liability section of my balance sheet. Any liabilities? Mortgage payable. I'm just going to call it mort payable. What does mort mean? Well, it means mortgage for us here, but the word mort actually means something. It means death. So that means that you're going to be paying this till you're dead, right? Like the mortuary, okay. Okay, so what happens? We sit here and we have this 200,000. And uh, anything else? The vehicle payable? That's what, uh, 150? Any other liabilities? I don't think so. I think that's it. So I've got total liabilities. Up 350, good. And now I just need my stockholders' equity. Stockholders' equity is going to be common stock and retain earnings, isn't it? Common stock is how much? Common stock is a million. And then I know from my statement of retained earnings that the ending balance in my retained earnings is supposed to be 117000 So my total stockholders' equity is 1117000 right? And then you add 1,117,000 to 350,000, my total liabilities. And so now my total liability plus stockholders' equity is 1,467,000. Does the balance sheet balance? Isn't an accounting beautiful? Okay. Now, we went ahead and we pulled that retained earning balance. Notice from the um, statement of retained earnings, 
but we've got to get our what? Our ledger accounts to match everything. Right now, at this point, we've made no entries to the retained earnings account. As far as the ledger accounts are concerned, retained earnings still has what kind of a balance in it? Still has what? And this is not the best presentation, guys. You might want to write the zero in there. Right now, at the beginning, it's still zero, isn't it? So I've got to go through the closing process so that a, I close my revenue and expense accounts to zero, but more importantly, so that my, maybe it's more importantly, so that my retained earnings matches what the balance sheet is saying retained earnings is right now. Don't we have to do that? Because right now retained earnings is zero until we do our closing. And so when we do our closing now, we're going to first close our revenue. And since our revenues were credits during the year, to close them at the end of the year, I'll do what? I'll debit revenue. And when I debit revenue, I'm basically what? Reversing out that credit. And now the balance is zero, isn't it? And I'm going to credit, just going back to my journal, I'm going to credit what? Income summary. And so now income summary sits there showing me, for a minute anyway, a $200,000 balance, right? But now I have to close my expense accounts, don't I? So when I go to close my expense accounts, since they had been debits during the year, to close them back to zero, I'm going to do what? Credit them, and I'm going to debit income summary. And when I De uh, excuse me, credit my expense account, the balance goes to zero, doesn't it? And then I debit my income summary. And income summary is a beautiful account because for a minute it shows me what my net income was, right? Was, which was 130. But income summary is also a temporary account that has to be closed to zero. So I go ahead and I credit my retain earnings for the 130, debit the income summary. When I debit the income summary, did it go to zero? So it's all set to start accepting journal entries next year. And I go to retain earnings and I credit retain earnings. Thank you, God. Retain earnings now has my net income in there, which is where it's supposed to go, right? Now all I have to do is close that dividend account. So I go ahead and for my dividend account, since I had done what? Since I had debited my dividend when I paid it, I credited cash. Now that I'm closing it, I'm going to do what? Credit dividend, debit retain earnings. When I credit the dividend, it closes it to zero. And I debit the retain earnings, bringing the balance from 130 to 117. Is the world at peace now? Is that what my retain earnings is? 117? That's what the ledger account says is 117? Question on any of that? Okay, good. Now would be the time to ask it. The reason I kind of hesitate on that, guys, I see throughout my students, freshmen, junior, freshmen, senior, uh, what comes after freshmen, sophomores, <laughs> rising juniors, whatever you want to call them, juniors, seniors, CPA candidates, colleagues that go into practice and have to call me and say, tell me how that closing thing works again. Tell me how the balance sheet, I can't get the balance sheet to balance. What did I do wrong? It's something that follows you around, okay? So that balance sheet income statement connection is very important. That it's not until we do what? Close our net income and close our dividends to what? To for our revenue expenses to income summary and then to retain earnings for dividends straight to retain earnings that the balance sheet finally balances again, right? This really is that was out of balance for a while there. How does it get out of balance? Because there are transactions in which you debit a balance sheet account, say cash, and you credit a reven uh, income statement account revenue, and now the balance sheet is not in balance anymore from that point forward until you do what? Till you close your revenue and expense accounts, your temporary accounts, right? Okay, so we're good there?
Okay, good. Now let's go ahead and look at year two now. Okay. So we're going to carry this forward to year two. This is also on Canvas. It is the second tab of that same file, right? There's a year one, year two tab. If you want the year two tab blank, you're going to have to do that yourself. I didn't blank that out, but it's very simple. Just, you know, delete all the things that are sitting inside of those uh, cells and it should take you like two seconds to do that. If you want to do that. I'm not sure that that's necessary, but let's look at year two. Everybody got one? Year two? I was perfect on this table? That's amazing. Thank you. Everybody got year two? Thank you, sir. Okay, so let's go through to year two. Now, important takeaway. I know you guys know this, but for my uh, introductory students, I always have to point this out, so let me go ahead and make sure we're all on the same page, that for my permanent accounts, thus the reason they're called permanent, which is in my balance sheet, my assets, my liabilities, my stockholders' equity, notice, guys, that what? The ending balances from the previous year carry forward to be the beginning balance. Any question on that? Right, if you got $117,000 in your pocket on December 31st, you go to bed before midnight, you wake up on January 1st, there better be $117,000 in there somebody stole from you, right? Okay, so that money is still there. All of our assets are still there. Okay, good. Now, for my what? For my temporary accounts, my income statement accounts, plus my income summary, my dividends, everything is what? Zero to start the year, right? Because we closed them last year and we're starting over. Okay, okay, good. Now, you come over. And uh, we have this first transaction, service is provided on account. So we provide the service, the guy will pay me later. This is accrual accounting, isn't it? So I go ahead and I accrue that revenue by debiting accounts receivable down here for 100000 post it in the ledger for 100000 the balance is now 100000 right? And I credit revenue for the 100000 even though the guy's going to pay me later, I can take that revenue if I've already completed the service, right? And we're going to talk at length in Chapter 4 or 5 about revenue recognition. We're just doing the simplest form of revenue recognition right now, right? Okay. All right, good. Now, I come in and I buy a two-year vehicle insurance uh, because I bought that vehicle and I need some insurance for it, right? So I debit the prepaid insurance prepaid insurance as you know is an asset because it has future economic benefit it's going to give me insurance coverage for the next year isn't it so that balance goes up to 1200 and i paid that in cash so i go ahead and i credit my cash 1200 bringing my beginning balance down a little bit then i go and i have this uh this like high high powered party thrower that comes in and says I heard you're the hottest DJ act going he says here's what I want to do I want to book you every month for the next year where you'll come in and you'll do a concert for ten thousand dollars and I'm gonna book you for every month for the next year and he comes in and tells me that he wants to do that on July 1st so what's going to happen? He's going to have me book from July 1st. I'll do a concert in July, a concert in August, September, October, November, December, into next year, January, February, March, April, May, June, right? It's going to be the six, the 12 concerts, 10000 a month. Now, am I going to tell the guy no? Am I going to say, no, 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 don't give me the money now. I'll tell you what, I'm really bad with cash, so wait for a while and give me the money later. No, I'll say Okay, and I take the cash. So he hands me this hundred and twenty thousand. I debit the hundred and twenty thousand dollars cash over here, 
and when I do, my balance comes up pretty nicely. And I credit the liability unearned revenue. Okay, now this is unearned revenue, liability unearned revenue that I credit for 120,000. That's a liability because I'm on the hook to provide this guy with the concert service, right? Am I on the hook? In fact, when he walked in to talk to me, he had a hook in his hand. It said, make sure you show up, right? And I'm okay, this guy's a serious dude. Is there a question, sir? What happens if I don't perform the concerts? He comes and gets me with the hook. He's going to sue me, and I'm going to end up in Judge Judy's court, right? And Judge Judy doesn't think it's too funny if you take somebody's money and then you don't provide them the service. And you can see one like that every now and then. Somebody will say, well, we gave the money in advance, and they were going to do our hair for the wedding, and then they didn't show up, and we had to <laughs> run around and find. Does Judge Judy laugh? When she hears that story, she said, you shouldn't have done that, right? And if you really do something bad, they'll hit you with punitive damages and something like that, which means you're going to get a penalty on top of having to give the person their money back, right? Okay, so you're definitely liable, so you credit that liability 120000 okay? Now, we come over, and uh, we decide we need some supplies. I don't know, some stuff to wipe down our equipment or something. So we go and buy supplies. For 24000 we debit the supplies, post it over here. We think those supplies are going to last a while. But we tell the guy, hey, you know, we're happening in DJ company. We'll uh, be back for more supplies. How about we get on an account with you and we pay you every so often? And the guy says, okay, fine. So we go ahead and we credit our accounts payable for 24000 Is that a liability? Pay a bill? Okay. All right, good. Now you come over. And you take a look at the next uh, transaction, and what happens? Remember, they owed us 100,000 for that first concert. They pay us some of that money. They owed us 100,000 up here, didn't they? We set up the receivable for that. So we go ahead, and of course, we debit the cash, post it. We credit the accounts receivable, post that, and notice that the account receivable now has what balance in it? 60,000, right? Because it was reduced by that credit. This is why they invented accounting, guys. Right here, right? What would happen? Somebody does some work for you. They say, well, we'll pay you later when Columbus comes and brings us the gold. And we say, okay, well, I guess we'll trust this guy. We don't want the guy to call us later out the window because there would be no phones. Uh, how much do we still owe you? We don't want to be the guy that's sitting there going, uh, hang on. Um, gee. Can I get back to you? We want to be the guy that before they finish asking the question, says 40000 Well, I wasn't going to ask you that, 40000 Well, why are you calling me? Because you owe me 40000 right? You're calling me because you owe me 40000 still? I don't care. Whatever it is, what would it be? 60000 <laughs> Okay. But the number is there so that we know, so there's no question about what we are owed for services that we provided. Okay. Okay, good. So we got that 60000 left. Now what? Now we come to the end of the year. It's December 31st, and we have to start making our adjusting entries for year end. So what's happened? Well, by the time we get to the end of the year, we've done six concerts, haven't we? And if we weren't booking that monthly, maybe we get to the year end, we're going to adjust the accounts, aren't we? So we go ahead, and we debit the unearned revenue here for 60000 just show it to you here. Debit the unearned revenue for 60000 and credit what? Revenue for 60 because we've now earned that, haven't we? So we go ahead and when we debit the unearned revenue for 60, now the balance is 60. Isn't accounting beautiful? We're telling the world that we've got six more concerts that will occur next year at $10,000 a piece, right? Now, unearned revenue is a liability, isn't it? But it's kind of an interesting liability in how analysts look at it. You'd say, well, analysts will look at that and it's a liability, so it's bad. Analysts look at unearned revenue year over year to see what? Are we consistently having business that we're getting paid in advance for and then we're earning it? We're busy. We're booked. Our services in our are in demand, aren't they? So unearned revenue is kind of a funny little liability and that it's actually kind of a good liability that you like to see a company having year to year. Okay, okay, good. Then you come over, 
and you take a look at our uh, next uh, adjusting entry was to accrue our insurance expense for one year. It was $1,200 for two years, wasn't it? And at the end of the year, now one year of that has expired. So we go ahead and we credit the uh, prepaid because that asset is coming down. And, of course, we're going to debit what? Debit our insurance expense. And, um, guys, I don't know if the one you have in front of you, the order of the entries posting may be different than what you see up here. Don't worry. It will all even out at the end if you see something a little different on your page, okay, because I didn't put them in the same order. Okay, and I'm using just one expense account because, again, I want this example to be contained on one page. Okay, okay, good. So then we come over and uh, we count our supplies. And when we count our supplies, we see that we only have 13000 left. Well, we bought 24000 didn't we? So if Johnny had 24000 apples and he eats... Um, uh, and there's only 13,000 left. How many did he eat? 11,000. He also has a very bad stomach ache, right? Okay, so if we ate $11,000 worth of apples, then we would go ahead and do what? Credit the supplies. So now the balance shows 13,000, which is what we counted this left. And we debit supply expense 11,000 and... Now our expenses are 11,006. And again, it may be a little different order. That's okay. Then we go ahead and we depreciate the building. Remember the building we bought? And I'm just going to assume that that building has a $200,000 salvage value. You take the original cost minus the salvage value. You divide that by the useful life. And that will give us an annual depreciation of 50,000. So we debit depreciation expense post that. There's our total expenses for the period now, and we credit the account accumulated depreciation for 50000 right? And we're going to do that every year, I guess, for the next 20 years or so? Okay. Okay, good. So now we're ready to pull our financial statements for year two. This is the easy part. Let's go ahead and let's do the income statement. Income statement, year two now. My revenues for year two are how much? Revenues for year two are how much? Good, 160000 My expenses for year two are how much? Oh, sorry. Right here? Yeah, 61.6. Good. Revenue minus expenses is net income. Net income is 98400 I believe. Right? Okay, good. Now I can go ahead and make up my statement of retained earnings. What's the beginning balance in retained earnings this year? 117000 thank you. It was right there. Last year's ending balance is this year's beginning balance. Good, 117000 I add what? What do you add to retain earnings? Net income. Net income is 98.4. Did I pay any dividends? I did not pay any dividends. Do I have to? I do not. That's the decision of the board of directors. In fact, it would be weird to pay a dividend in year one the way we did. Okay, but whatever. Dividend, subtract dividend, but we could just put zero there, right? Okay, and so what's the ending balance in my retained earnings? Huh? 215,100, you say? 400? Okay, great, thank you. Right? Okay, good. Okay, so now I can do my balance sheet. It says balance sheet. Okay, and let's start with my assets. Do I have any assets? 
cash, your favorite, is 275800 Good. Do I have any more assets? The equipment. Guys, just suspend your imagination for a minute. I know we didn't depreciate the equipment because I don't want to turn this into a three-day example. Okay, so the equipment, we didn't depreciate it. Don't worry about that. How about the building? Uh, any other assets? Let me ask that first. Yeah, let's do accounts receivable next. Accounts receivable is the 60000 60,000. Okay. Any other asset supplies? Supplies are what? 13? Okay. Any other ones? Prepaid insurance? Prepaid insurance is 600. Okay. Now I can go ahead and put the building. Building is what? 1,200,000. And then I'm going to take the accumulated depreciation of how much? 50,000? And subtract it as a contra asset? Any other assets? Any other assets? I don't think so.